Right, welcome to this video on high poly modeling tips for beginners. First of all, we're just gonna go through some setup tips that I usually use. Uh, first of all, we will open up the material editor, press M, and select the standard material and apply it. And I'm gonna increase the specularity and gloss on the material, and this will help to uh, see any defects or pinching any other errors on your model. Convert it to editable poly, and I add a turbo smooth. And I usually increase this to about two, and click the isoline display so you don't get a messy looking mesh. And the window crossing box helps when uh, trying to select faces. These are the shortcuts that I usually like to use in high poly modeling. So the quick tip on normal map geometry. So if you're going to bake out your normal map with your high polygon model, you always want to exaggerate your bevels and indents and any hard edges you want to smooth out a little more than normal and it'll show up better on the normal map. As you can see the one on the left here is what you want. It's a little more exaggerated and it'll show up a lot nicer. Now into the three edge system. All right, so here you always want to have three edges on any corner that you want to have it hard and not super smooth. So I'll select the swift loop tool and just add some edges correspondingly. As you can see there are three edges to each corner. And when I apply the turbo smooth modifier it smooths it out nicely. I'll show you what happens when I move some of the edges a little farther away, you get more of a curve. Let's move that one back a little. And as, I, as you can see, it's a little more rounded out. And that can be useful depending on what look you're going for. Alright, so here I'm just going to extrude out another small section and add some corresponding loops and give you a better idea of the three edge system here. So I'm just extruding this part out a little. And as you can see the turbo smooth it just makes kind of a big lump and when the edges are hardened out. So again selecting the swift loop tool and just adding a bunch more loops. As you can see that's still not quite right it just rounds it off like a circle. I want to have it more square. I still need a few more edges here. That's almost there, but forgotten one more. Top and bottom. And that should about do it. Nice and hard and even. Hopefully that gives you a better idea of how to model with swift loop. So just a little quick tip here on aligning vertices. Sometimes you might want to align a bunch of them to a certain vertex and easier just to use these snaps here, a vertex snap, and simply align them like this instead of entering each value manually. Now onto edge constraints. Sometimes you want to align an edge loop evenly all around your mesh and that can be difficult when using methods like connect tool. You can see here when I move it up, it is uneven at the top compared to the bottom part. So what I do is I select edge constraint, move it all the way up, let go, and then move it down a bit and it's perfectly even. As you can see without it, it just messes up the mesh. Just going to add a few more loops and swift, swift loop to show you what it looks like all turbo smooth. And there you go. Nice and even. Here we're going to talk about avoiding triangles and n-gons. If there's anything that's more than a quad or four sides. As you can see here, there's a five-sided quad there. In this situation, to fix it, Simply select target weld and weld a couple vertices together. That's all you need to do. Now you have all quads and you won't get any smoothing errors. Now 
in this situation in this piece of mesh here you can see there's a triangle right near the bottom as I've selected here and an easy way frequently to fix this is just to add an, an edge loop or another edge right onto the tri triangle itself making it a quad as you can see a triangle is now a quad and you won't have any problems Now on to adding shapes. Alright, so here I'm just going to add a circular shape into this plane. And the first thing to do is select the middle face, inset it a bit. And I'm going to want to add a loop right straight through the middle here using connect. And this will help to make a more perfect circle. The trick here is to create a shape, in this case a cylinder, six sides. It's created right in the middle here. Usually I like to lower it a bit. Now back into the plane, select vertex mode, and again select your snaps. And just snap the inner vertices to each point on the cylinder. And you can use more than six vertices depending on how big the hole will be, but usually six is enough. And there you go. I'm just deleting the cylinder. Now sometimes the snaps doesn't work perfectly for whatever reason and you get some uneven an une uneven face, so you can just go and ma click make planar in the align section. Now selecting the middle circle here. It's going to perform a, perform a series of insets and extrudes. Um, the values are approximate. You can just kind of eyeball them. It's going to extrude inwards in this case. One more extrude. And one more inset. Now let's see what that looks like turbo smooth. And there we go. Alright, just a quick tip on uh, sort of a hard edge for a bolt or a screw. So first thing, I'll just create the uh, bolt or shape itself. Just increasing the iterations on the turbo smooth there. So I select these middle faces, inset them, inset again, just a little bit. And again, just a series of extrudes. Always extrude once and then add, add edge loops later, if you prefer. Just extruding inwards a little, and that's good enough. That might be hard to see, but at the very bottom, you can see it's kind of looks like the shape's sort of welded in. You want more of a hard edge as if it was screwed in. So just selecting all those faces with grow and click detached element. And scale it up a little. And that's all you need to do. Now you can see it's a pure hard edge. Can give your piece a more realistic look. Another quick tip is just small circles. Usually you'll need six, maybe eight points or vertices making a circle, but if it's small enough, four or the amount of a one quad is good enough. So here I'm just going to move some edges down, make the quad a little smaller. And select the face and just inset it. And you can see it's kind of rectangular, so I'm just scaling it in. It's not perfectly square, but it's good enough for our purposes. And set it slightly once again, and then again, just more extrudes. And another inset. And we'll see what that looks like with Turbo Smooth. 
There you go, looks pretty good. You didn't need to use a cylinder with vertex snaps. All right, and here is just the general methodology that I use for creating shapes. Now we'll talk about what I call local insets. So for this piece, we basically want to harden these edges, but as you can see, a turbo smooth, it's rounded out. So one thing you could do is select the Swift Loop tool and add some loops here. But if you have this piece attached to a bigger piece, it'll add it throughout the whole model, and that might create some unnecessary complexity. So what we could do is just select these faces here and just add an inset. Simple as that. Fortunately, sometimes it'll distort the geometry. So a different way to do this, and as you can see, we have what we want there. Another method to do this is just select these edges, connect on one edge. Same thing on the other side. Then select all these edges here. And again, connect two edges this time. Making our own inset, effectively. We have some quads, so we still need to vertex weld some of the vertices. I'm sorry, uh, N-Gons, actually. And it does the same thing, but it doesn't distort your geometry in any way. So a final quick tip here is what I call world access extrude. Sometimes we want to extrude a piece, we'll extrude it on the normal, as you can see here. But if you just want to extrude it straight up, like this, all you need to do is extrude with value zero and then move it manually. And here's a complex example of high poly modeling from my portfolio. The giant mech here. Just pan around a bit and you can have a good look. All the methods I've talked about were used in this model and it's more or less all you need. Just give you a quick wireframe shot. Give you a better idea of the edge loops I used. Alright, thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something.